The posterior pelvic tilt is a fundamental movement used in calisthenics to flatten the lower back. Naturally, in the resting upright position, the pelvis sits with a slight anterior tilt and a corresponding arch or lordosis in the lower back. By tilting the pelvis posteriorly, the lower back will flatten. The muscles responsible for posteriorly tilting the pelvis are the abs and glutes. Each of these muscles will contribute more or less in different positions. For example, in the supine hollow body hold, the abs do most of the work as the hips are slightly flexed and glute activation would oppose this. To help understand pelvic position and its impact on the lumbar spine, stand with your index fingers on the bony bumps at the front of your pelvis and the thumbs on the bumps at the back. You'll probably notice your thumbs are higher than the index fingers, reflecting a mild anterior tilt at rest. To posteriorly tilt the pelvis, you can think of holding a bucket of water and tipping some water out the back. You'll notice this reduces the arch in your lower back. To anteriorly tilt the pelvis, think of tipping water out the front. You'll notice this increases the arch in the lower back. Generally in calisthenics, we want to have a posterior pelvic tilt, or at least limit anterior tilting of the pelvis to achieve a straight body. There are few exceptions to this rule, such as the hollow back. To train the posterior pelvic tilt, many exercises can be used. Before trying strengthening exercises, you should be comfortable doing the posterior pelvic tilt in resting positions, such as lying on your back and standing. The easiest way to practice the posterior pelvic tilt is to start lying on your back with your knees bent and to flatten your back to remove the gap between the floor and your lumbar spine. When you're comfortable with this, try it in the standing position against a wall and finally freestanding to remove tactile feedback from the wall. When you're comfortable achieving the posterior pelvic tilt in resting positions, you can then start training it with more challenging exercises before integrating it into calisthenic skills. A staple exercise used in gymnastics is the supine hollow body hold. Start on your back with a posterior pelvic tilt and progress by lifting the head, shoulders, hands and feet a few inches. Then straighten the legs, lower them closer to the floor and finally lift the arms overhead. Each progression will increase the difficulty by lengthening the lever arm of the limbs, increasing the torque your abs must fight against. Choose the position you can hold with your lower back flat for 30 to 60 seconds and perform sets two to three days each week. When this is too easy, the challenge can be increased by incorporating this into dragon flags. Here, the goal is to have a perfectly straight body and prevent arching of the lower back. These positions have good transferability to the front lever as they mimic the torso position and motor pattern used in the skill. The hollow body hold can also be trained in chest down positions such as the plank. The difficulty can be increased by placing the elbows in front of the hands or doing a dynamic variation of the plank with ab wheel rollouts. With these exercises, the goal is to maintain a posterior pelvic tilt and prevent arching or extension of the lower back. Another great exercise to practice the posterior pelvic tilt with is the reverse hyper. With this exercise, try to limit arching of the lower back as you extend the hips. The reverse hyper has great transferability to the back lever and planche as it mimics the posture and core motor pattern of these skills as you work to maintain a posterior pelvic tilt while extending the hips. With the reverse hyper, you may not be able to keep the back totally flat, but you should have the intention of a posterior pelvic tilt. 
Keeping the lower back flat in this position is challenging and being able to do so is rare, as normally extending the hips is coupled with an anterior tilt. For this reason, my recommendation for the reverse hyper, planche and lever is to have the intention of a posterior pelvic tilt, but set the standard for good technique as having no more arch in the lumbar spine than at rest. For best results, train the posterior pelvic tilt in challenging but achievable positions that mimic your individual goals. Examples of this include training the posterior pelvic tilt in the wall handstand to improve freestanding alignment, drag and flags for transferability to the front lever, and reverse hypers for the planche and back lever. If you have difficulty integrating the posterior pelvic tilt into skills, despite ease with related exercises, practice the goal posture with assistance to reduce the difficulty. For example, practicing the back lever with assistance from a band will allow you to specifically practice the motor pattern required to flatten the lower back in this position. I hope this video helps your understanding of pelvic and lumbar positions. If you enjoyed it, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe for future videos.